Hey, welcome to Ape Climbing 101 with John Middendorf. There's a man working setting up a portal edge. And our class. Say hi class, Tony. Oh, too cool for school. Okay, now I'm kind of free climbing, so I'm above this piece. I'm just going to clip the rope in now, whenever you get the chance, really. Looking for the next piece. I'm kind of short on these small cams. Ready. Eater. Daisy. Knowing it. And again, you know, if it was steep and I was getting pumped, you can get into any of these aiders' steps. They're not that strong, but they're good enough for body weight. And uh, just, you want to spend as least time as putting yourself in. It makes a big difference when you get on overhanging stuff. Can it show the foot rest? What's that? Can it show the foot behind your butt rest? Yeah, the Royal Robinson. Yeah, I don't use that much because it. Oh, really? Hurts my knee, but. Yeah. Whenever you do oh, yeah. clip in those. Like in a subway, like if you clip in your aerator, remember it's there because otherwise you can get a, a big uh, uh, posture later on. And I normally wouldn't do all these cats on something this easy. But I'm doing them just for the routine of what's going on here. Again, I'm really comfortable hanging out here. Oh, hey, I need some water. You know, you can get some water from your partner. Or, and you're always connected with this trail line. You know, never forget the trail line. And it's fine. It's just, you're going to need to haul it back for starters, but, but also, uh, you know, you may run out of a certain type of gear that you have extra of. I may need some more gear actually, but just for a cam. I can just crank it two free moves. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Let's see, maybe the hook plate won't. Alright. Okay, I'm gonna hook. Right. Okay, so hooking. <laughs> Hooking's a little different. <laughs> hooking often, when you're hooking, you can't see what you're hooking because it's a way above your head. So you feel as best you can. Make sure it's not too sloping. And then you may leave the hook there, but I wouldn't recommend it. Make sure it's a little different. With a hook, it's not going to get left behind, so you don't have to make it rope ready. But what you do need to do is make sure that it won't get blown off. 
So the idea with the hooks is that you use um, your baby. So. I get my hook secured. Baby. Okay, now I probably do want to test. So I'll probably tell my partner, hey, watch me. You know, come down and wait. Yeah, I clip the uh, the daisy in as short as possible. So I'm starting to wait and I'm still hooked into this. What's happening is, oh, the rope in now too. That's another nice thing about making these things rope ready is it reminds you there's the extra beer there makes it just easy to use for something. So actually what's happening now is it may be hard to see, but I got my weight on both these pieces. That's not a very good test. You want to make sure when you're testing that your weight's on the piece that you're actually testing. So but it's a good way to preliminary test it, you know? And in fact, right now I can see that it's at least not totally skating off that thing. Now I'm a little more worried about this. I'm clipped in through my belay loop. And so my weight's still on this bottom piece. But I'm thinking about unclipping <coughs> my direct connection to this piece. But before I do that, I'm going to clip this daisy in with a little bit more slack. So, but not too much. Because it just hook pop and I want to shock load this piece assuming it's going to be like a marginal piece on harder aid. <laughs> I also have the rope going through but and that's that's probably almost better because it'll um, you know when you fall on a rope it's um well there's there's um there's different things to discuss there actually but uh generally when I'm a climbing I'm almost independent of the blare on the pieces that I'm on because I'm using my daisies in a way that I'm always hooked into two different pieces. So those are essentially my direct belay to the rock. But the rope, of course, is for like if both these pieces failed. <coughs> so now I'm ready to um, start testing this piece for real. And I'm totally unweighting that. And I'm getting on this hook. And I'm fully on this hook now. And the way you can check that is just to make sure there's no weight on here. So I'm on this hook, I'm going to give it a slight bounce test. Hooks you don't really want to like really yard on because <laughs> they, they can jump off really. So I'm on this hook. And the other thing about hooks is that right now in fact I'm pulling slightly to the left. Well I know what I'm going to be standing on, I'm going to be pulling pulling this way. And right then it just shifted so I'm, I'm doing like a lot of testing and groundwork for this hook by being in a safe position slightly below this safe piece here and I'm just kind of like checking it out getting my nerve up you know Whew. okay <laughs> <laughs> so then I'll gingerly step up on it and then I'll get to see it for the first time <laughs> oh doesn't look good <laughs> <laughs> slack on that one. It's on a little tiny nubbin. Yeah. Can watch me here. You can give me slack on this one. I'm, I'm kind of being theatrical because I want to uh, demonstrate what real acorn is about. Are you demonstrating a bad hook or is that a bad hook? It's actually not as good as I'd like it to be. <laughs> good. Plus I just saw it and I can see there's a better place for it. So I'll get totally established back in this bottom aider again. And I'll reposition it a little bit. And that's good A practice is to take your time. You know, there's no rush. The one time the one time I rush A climbing was on this pitch on the Sea of Dreams. And uh, we had done like four hard pitches that day and we had two more to go. And I was on an A4 pitch and it was getting dark and we wanted to make this ledge under the cyclops eye. Otherwise we'd have to stay busy and we just did like five or six nights of that so we were looking forward to actually having a good ledge to sleep on. And so I was going fast and I placed a hook on this flake and uh, I gave it a little brief test and got right up on it. But a little bit of outward pressure 
pulled that flake off. It was a big flake about the size of a, you know, like about this big. And this whole flake, about two inches thick, it came off and I went for like a 60, 70 footer. Ripped out all these heads, ripped out some rivets. And uh, this one rivet caught me and I came swinging way down below the blade, you know, it was avid, went right past my partner. And, uh, you know, whew. I was looking at another, like, uh, it, and it was a pitch where I actually traversed down and then started hooking up and then there was a rivet and then there was um, copper heads and all those things ripped out. One, the one rivet between me and the blare held. And if that had gone like another 30, 40 feet and hit a ledge for sure, because there was a big ledge that stuck out down there. And so I was pretty lucky that time. It was kind of funny too, because somebody witnessed it down the valley before. And, uh, and like three days later, we came down to the ground, and this guy comes rushing up to us and goes, I recognize you, you're the one who took that 200 foot fall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was that far, but it was kind of interesting hearing it from the ground perspective. Yeah, okay. That's what the most of it is. And you said thing now that. Not lean oh, out, but lean on it, you know? Like, you really want to keep the downward pull, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to really pull it out, you know. Yeah, but uh, just, to, just to keep your weight off your arms, because you can take you do the long climb, uh, and, and you're, up, and you're holding yourself in all the time. Stop. Yeah, you, you will not be able to make it in the same oh, way. Right. So the idea yeah. is just to keep your weight tipping. And then just rest on it. And then when you're moving up, you know, you, while you're moving up, you know, you're maybe pulling up, but then you clip it in and rest. Alrighty. Yeah, right. Oh. Place start. <laughs> John, are you active in guiding most of the year, or do you just do that as an occasional side she was like, five yeah, like, I'll just stay yeah, right there. So, this would essentially be uh, the haul line. So, when we climb, when each of us, when we set up each of these uh, pitches, we're going to be using the daisy chains to be secure and clipping the rope in at the right time and not clean pitches. And, uh, People can just come over and try that at any time when there's a break. So, did I talk about the difference between these uh, kind of GMRs? No. I didn't. Well, there's different types of GMRs, and uh, there's, uh, there's some new ones by um, Yates, I think. They look pretty good, and CMI makes some ones. And my favorite are these clogs. They're kind of old fashioned, but they have a nice. Um, they all, they all have a characteristic of the safety trigger, which prevents, once you clip the rope, once you use the safety trigger to open the cam up, and once you clip that rope in, you can't come off. And it's really important, like, when you're on a traverse, that uh, if, if, this, if this safety lever, for example, wasn't there, it'd just come right off. So that thing is key. And, and another safe thing to do when you're on a traverse is actually get a beater down here to buy the handle so you actually have a well these don't work as well for that here go say what you can do is just clip, clip the uh, these it works a little better so if it's a reverse you actually put this I can't bring it through this hole and through that rope right there so it prevents it from torquing too much Anyway, the uh, difference between all these ascenders is uh, they all have advantages and disadvantages. This has like a really hard to get used to um, triggering mechanism, safety trigger, these pencils. And what you're doing when you're, when you're cleaning is you're constantly taking the top one off the rope and clipping it above the piece you're about to clean. So you want a, you want a, a sender that you can easily take on and off. That's why I like these fog easy. To, uh, take on and off. Um, but these actually don't work very well for icy ropes. <coughs> and the pencils are really the only thing that do. So if you're going, if you're planning to do some alpine 
walls or mountaineering, you probably want to um, get some pestles. Okay, so I know it's a lot of information to get at once, but I'm going to go into the Jumarin aspect and basically um, you really want locking carabiners for your cinders, especially in your bottom one. Because when you're Jumarin, you don't have a blade. This, your, your blade is basically your attachment to these cinders. So, put them both on the rope. If you're right-handed, you probably want your right ascender higher, your left one lower. So you can put that in. Oh, there's an aider in that one, and now put the aider in this one. And now, the way you're connected is, again, with your daisy chains. And the most important thing about Jumari is the length of your connection between your waist and the top ascender. It's really key. It's it's usually, people set it up like at the end of this. And it, this is just a ridiculous situation because you're way up there, you can't reach that thing. And in fact, the right length turns out to be somewhere about eight inches or so. And uh, even, even shorter. So you're actually fairly tight into that. But your connection to your bottom ascender can be looser. But, since often you'll be clipping this <coughs> up and over pieces, taking it off and clipping it over, you want to make sure this, this, that when you're doing that, that makes this one your only attachment to continued livelihood on this planet. <laughs> so you, the only one other thing you got to remember is that generally your feet are going to be in offset steps on your aiders, and uh, on uh, vertical stuff, on low angle stuff, you may have one step in the fourth aid or one step in the third aid. In general, on vertical stuff, you're going to have one step in the third aid and one step in the second aid. It's important to remember that, if you, just as a rule of thumb, because it took me a year or two to figure out that they shouldn't be in the same length step because we didn't have any books or anything in those days. Uh, the idea is that. Um, you want them offset because these are offset, right? Like one's going to be higher than the other. And how do you remember which one's, which is the third, which is the second? Well, this is higher. So since you kind of want your feet level, my right one, which is higher, I'll probably put my foot in the third step. My left one, which is lower, I'll put my foot in the second step, and that should equalize my feet. So to get started, get it off that one. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people get into the Jumar and they're thrashing about it. There's one guy yesterday who, who uh, I don't know what he's doing. We, we worked on it for a while, but no matter what, he would just be like, what? And the rope was like, and then he'd be like, I'm moving this up. And, and, uh, and then he'd be like, every move was like that. And I was like, you know, <laughs> there's going to be like a sharp edge or something that you don't want to be uh, jumping around too much. And, uh, so the idea is that you want to work on a system that allows you to hang comfortably and move up smoothly, smoothly. So just think smooth. And um, and, and if you're having trouble, get rid of this top aider altogether. That's usually what people, what kind of like throws people off. It's like a convenience. The bottom one is when you step in. Again, second step. You step up and you, and then you just. Move up and hang. Move up your bottom one. Move up, hang. Step up, move up, hang. So now I get to this piece here. I can't get the piece because I got tension on it. Well, I could probably do that and clean it. So if you can, that's the way to do it. Say I get to a place where I can't maneuver around and get the tension off this. Which is generally the case. You gotta. One safety system is that because I'm about to take this ascender off and clip it in over this piece, 
you want to get in the habit, especially when you're learning, just to tie backup knots. And that can be any, a really simple overhand knot clipped into your locking bean or to your waist. And that way, if I'm doing this, and somehow I fall out of it, I'll, uh, and, you know, I'll land on this one, but you don't ever want to trust this with your whole life, so I'll be tightening the rope that way. It's a good safety. Is there any danger of these Jumars with teeth uh, ripping apart the rope? Yeah, if you, if, there's been a few deaths related to that where people took a shock load, fell like 15 feet onto a sender, onto a rope, cut the rope. These descenders will cut the rope at about 1,000 pounds. The ones there without the teeth? The pencils will cut them at about 900. And uh, they don't fall. Don't fall on the cinders, yeah. <coughs> and don't use them for any kind of belay system. That, that somebody tried that once, and that, that's one of the accidents I'm talking about. Hey, John, why wouldn't you put your daisy chain on the, on the piece and then go above it and take the chain out there? You could, you know, and that, that would be a really safe way to do it. It's, it seems like it'd be a lot of work. And not only that, but maybe the piece is like an A3 piece, which you can get a whole, you wouldn't want to be suspended from anywhere. But, you know, if you're, that's, that's a good point. Maybe if you're doing a traverse or something, you may actually do that. But again, you know, you don't want to, you may want a third daisy if you're going to do that, because you really want to keep them light to these two daisies. But a daisy can be anything from a sling to, a, you know, a piece of webbing or, you know, you know, you can create a daisy instantaneously for the sling and clip in again. Um, can I talk about the fact that daisies should be girth hitched to your harness? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to using a carabiner? I know I did yesterday, but... Okay, so I got my backup knot. I just clipped over that, and as soon as I wait, the top one, this becomes loose and I can unclip that and clean this piece. And the idea is like when you're in the nailing... I want to leave these in though because I want, I want it to... Uh, Go a little quicker today, and so people can just eight climb up, and as if it was a uh, fixed. So, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that happens a lot too. On <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I do want to show is um, that's why we got a top rope. <laughs> Real world. Okay, one thing I want to show is, okay, say I get into a position like this, where there's a traverse. This can be a real nightmare, or it could be the simplest thing in the world. And there's three, three situations where this may happen. Um, one is where um, it's just this real short traverse, and that's usually pretty easy. You could probably, in fact, this one is so short, I could actually just weight it. And uh, if I continue to weight it, this bottom one is going to get clogged up here. And so what you can do is if it's not too much tension, and I can hold the rope below this ascender, open the cam, and kind of lower myself out. Once I'm down over here, and I just clip over here. The few times you actually unclip your bottom ascender and it doesn't stay clipped in the rope, and I'd still be able to reach over here and clean this piece. Okay? That's probably the most common situation and the easiest to deal with. Well, sometimes, like on the nose, there's long pendulums like getting into the stove legs, where you actually swing across about 50, 60 feet over to the stove legs. And when you, when the second's coming up to that, he or she comes up, and then there's just like the rope's going across. <laughs> and depending on how friendly, if you're doing it fast, actually what, what, you, what you really want to do here is you just solo the first, the next um, like 80 feet of the stove legs. And so the rope goes up and up again. But, you know, of course, for that to happen, the leader would have had to imagine this scale of this being like 60 feet. The leader would have to go on over the stove legs and then solo all the way up, like 80, 90 feet for that to happen. 
Now, usually I'll, I'll make it about 60 feet. The rope will be going like slightly down in the, and that's when I'll start to want a piece. You know, you don't want to put a piece way down here, the rope's going up, down, and up again. That's ridiculous. And you don't need a piece there because that's not going to really help you anyway. It's going to be a huge rope drag. So you climb up a ways until you're feeling comfortable, depending on what kind of swing you're willing to take. If you fall, put a piece in. Um, so this could be a situation where, you know, imagine this was, instead of just being five, like 50 feet across. Um, obviously I won't be able to just lower out there and have, keep the rope going through this piece. I'll never be able to reach back and get this. So what happens always in this situation is that there'll be a piece that you leave fixed. And usually on routes like those or something, it'll still be there. It'll be there already for you. So there's different ways you can do this. Um, one is to use the extra rope that you have and actually set up a rappel. And if you forget this other technique I'm going to show you, remember that. And just make sure you get enough rope to essentially set up a rappel. And then you can just rappel down. And as you swing, you know, you clip your ascender onto this one, and as you rappel down, you'll just naturally swing over and start waiting that next anchor, right? And when you're done, you just pull it like any other rappel. You can do that. There's another way to do it, and uh, it's, uh, it basically involves um, like a little pulley system without the pulley. And you can do it through slings. Usually it will be a sling, in fact. Sometimes it will be a carabiner, which is nice. And oh. Well, okay, if I was really doing this, I would be tied into the very end of the rope, right? <laughs> it should be. Yeah, I had that backup knot in there, but uh, really it's a good thing to always be tied in the rope. There's the tragic story of Carol Moyer, you know, who she always bragged about not needing to be backed in when she was Jumaring and she was on the tangerine trip and there's a pitch which goes up and then down up again and she was going on the down part and she somehow clipped her Jumaring upside down which seemed right because it was like facing up but it was really upside down relative to the way the rope was anchored and uh, she slipped out of it and without that backup she just she went all the way to the ground so in general, on those walls, you want to always be tied in to the end of the rope. So I'm going to tie in now. It should have been. And in addition to this tie-in, you may have backups, like three or four backups going. You know, at closer intervals. Generally, you just need one backup at a time. So, I mean, say I had a backup here. If I went up and wanted another backup that was tighter, I'd untie this one. So, in this case, I'm going to use, this is a, a, what I'm about to demonstrate is a system for lowering out when you're um, using the end of the rope that you're tied into. And basically all you do is imagine this is a sling, just push it, push the bite of rope that comes directly off your waist through the sling and clip that bite back into your harness. Did we get that? Yeah. Okay, once you've done that, then essentially you got a pulley system to work with. You just pull up this fourth line. You can keep pulling up. And it's and eventually that's a common mistake I just made. That, this ascender was too high, so when I unweighted it, the slack that was in here came out. So I got to come back onto that and down ascend a little bit. Just give it maybe a foot or so. Okay, then again, I'm going to winch myself up on this completely separate system, essentially, that I'm using from the end of the road. And this can be really scary. Like there's a there's a pitch on the Pacific Ocean wall. Well, you got to do this, and it's on a knife blade. It's only in about three eighths of an inch. 
and uh, it's tied off. And it's a big long swing, and there's a corner too if it pops. So you're doing it, you're re re reaping up on this thing, and uh, you're just imagining what would happen if it pops. It'd be a, I wouldn't die, but it wouldn't be fun. So now I'm completely on this single piece. And uh, this, this, is, this is slack. I'm still safely, safely tied in here. And really what I should do, make sure to do, get a little extra when you do this, but tie it back up in this one too. Whenever you're doing any kind of odd maneuver, you know, and that goes into a lock and beam on your harness. So, but anyway, you know, right now I'm, I'm kind of removing that system. So now I can unclip this. And at this point I can just like lower myself out until I start coming onto this one. And the nice thing about this is like once you're done, remember that was, I should have grabbed that beater, but that was a sling, it just unclipped from here and it popped right out. So, I'm going to go up. That's really what I want to show you this morning. And, uh, so, people can climb this one, they're going to need a hook to get across this section. And other than that, we'll leave this here in place. <coughs> When I'm actually, you know, it's, it's, it's a fine thing to let go of this bottom of cinder. Use that left hand to hold yourself in as you clip up and over it. Okay. <coughs> if you get a chance to gym art, practice down gym art too. different it just takes a little coordination to <coughs> get used to uh the second responsibility to make sure the rope comes up. And I may be climbing and all of a sudden, ah, oh, you know, it gets stuck on something. Well, when you're on a wall, you know, instead of setting up a rappel and going down to retrieve the rope, you just downed you more. And one of those things that elicit the curse is on my back up here. Okay, so remember, helmet for these kind of things and make sure to get the top rope what somebody will play. And uh, hopefully uh, what we'll try to do is, what time is it now? 11. After 11. It's after 11. Yeah. For the next couple hours. Let's try to get, make everybody get to about a half hour. 20 minutes. You know, and, uh, and our haul bag will consist of this portal edge only. This will be my haul line, so you can put that in when I get there. And then I'll haul the bag up, and when I'm hauling, then you get your GMRs set up, and you're going to come up to the blade too. And then we're going to set up the portal edge from a hanging stance, and hopefully mm -hmm. see how uh, complicated that will be. All right, so I'm going to head up there. And um, again, uh, when, you, when, you, when you come up with the GMR, you want this, this top one to be pretty short, mm -hmm. right? And and the, the one that's attached to the bottom, the sender will be longer. So, I'm going to head out. Uh -huh. He's going to put it on the web. Hey, that's fine. John gets royalties. Just <laughs> download it. Bootleg.
Michelle, so when you come up, you'll get a blade from someone on that red rope. Right. Okay. 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 Michelle, you should just start remarking up that purple rope right now. Right. No, that's the Holland. That's attached to him. Yeah, right, Steve? You okay? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, don't do that, he won't come back. What a great day. It's just perfect. Hard to believe it's November. Until so you go to bed at night. It was cold in San Diego. It was cold. It was wet. It was windy. Say, I'm going back to Chicago where it's warm and sunny. Oh, I'd say that. So the, 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 we need a locking one there, too. Locking one should be good at the end. Uh, because he didn't have it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Steve's got it. I've got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't girl. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. This is how he had it. It's a daisy chain. That's how he had it. Yeah, he did. Any words of wisdom for the uh, the mass of Johan? It's going to be easy. Now. It's going to be at least like three good pieces. And, uh, and be on the scope of this course, but you know, you want to equalize things, so.
You know, of course, this is a heavy bag. I wouldn't put the bar into my arm here, but. Boy, those wall haulers are really making nice. Yeah, it's really nice. The, the old way is to use a, another ascender. So after I finish hauling, if you were if you were actually pulling up all your gear, would you back that up? Like I've seen pictures of people backing it up with another ascender. Would you do that? The hauler? Yeah. I wouldn't back it up with another ascender, but I'd, I may actually back it up with another like quick draw. Uh huh. So if the pulley did. It would still be going through a carabiner. Oh, okay. So once it gets up here, I gotta get this off. And so what you end up doing is um, hauling up maybe to the knot and then uh, clipping this into a. Switching back over here. Clipping this into a secure part of the anchor. And again, you know, this, this bag can be heavy, so you want to clip it into something that is going to be out of the way. Now, this is an awkward uh, belay because it's all a vertical crack. <laughs> Often on a wall, you get a little bit spread out, and that's nice. So once I get this thing clipped in, it's still all the way from the hauling pulley. So what I end up doing is I'll haul it a little bit more and then release the cam. The nice thing about these hauling pulleys is that they have a a pin that you can keep the cam open and then I can just lower the bag out until it's on the, the anchor and it's no longer on the fall line. <coughs> I don't know if that's clear but basically um, it's hard to see what's going on up here I'm sure but basically uh, you know I just transferred the load from the hauling pulley to a main part of the anchor and now the hauling pulley is free which is essential because I'm going to need to get this free for uh, the leader on the next pitch. Take all knots out. All right, so how's it going with you, Michelle? Doing good. Oh. And when you, whenever you have a big haul bag, you want to not only make sure it's clipped in once like this, but it, the rope would actually still be tied into it, the end of it, and I'd probably tie a, another backup so it's clipped in twice. Because if that haul bag goes, there's been accidents where people, the haul bag went, but it was still tied into the very end of the rope, so it fell 165 feet, Whoa. And, you know, onto the anchors, and it can rip out <coughs> heavy haul bag. So, Remember to always back your haul bag up and take your own the Okay. So I'm going to wait for, uh, Michelle's going to actually set this up, hopefully. And, uh, so it's good practice whenever you're wall climbing <coughs> to keep things organized. Like, if I, if I was here, I'd probably start stacking this haul one way to do it is to stack it through an aider so it's all ready to go for the next lead. It's a nice technique where you know, just lap pull it through the uh, through a loop of the aider or sling. Slings are also nice because then you can move it around. But and so at the end there would just be a nice coil of rope that would be out of the way. We're not going to do that right now because we're going to simplify things. These are probably getting away, but uh, we're not going to worry about that for now. And now the next thing we're going to do is actually I could have probably set up the portal edge, but I'd like to uh, have someone else do it because I've set it up a million times. And uh, basically, it's in the bag, and if you packed it right, you got your. Uh, your strap will actually spins from right handy out of the bag. And that's how I packed it last night. It was a little blurry. But <laughs> and now, Michelle, you can just take it out. Okay. And, the and you're gonna you're gonna actually like face out from the cliff when you're setting this up. Like you're gonna just kinda get out so you're actually facing out. Probably towards me around this way. Yeah. 
Yeah.